there's only potential ahead to see what you can do. And if it doesn't happen, fine. But if it does, like that is, yeah, that's amazing. That's like, for me, it's this mindset of opportunity ahead that makes things exciting. Last year, I raced Unbound for the first time and fell in love with it and knew the second it was over, I wanted to come back. I raced Unbound last June and then basically put all my focus back on Kona at the Ironman World Champs last October. And I knew that would be my last Kona, knowing I kind of wanted to try a couple different things this year, the next couple years beyond triathlon. And so I raced Kona on Saturday the next day, we're laying on the beach, and I pull up Havilene on my phone, and then I'm like, oh, this is a Western States qualifier race, <laughs> which I don't know much about trail running at this point. I mean, I still feel like I don't, but I knew Western States. It's like the one race I knew. For me, in my mind, it was the Kona of trail running. So I'm like, oh my goodness, that would be so cool. Like, that's the one race I know if I go do this one, I could maybe do Western States. And I didn't even know which one you had to do to qualify or what it what was required. I ended up doing the 100 miler. Um, and it was right after Havelina. I, I did not get my golden ticket to Havelina. I ended up fifth on the day. It was after the race, Mike called me and he's like, for your efforts, Hoka gets a sponsor slot into Western States and we want to award you our sponsor slot to Western States. This was early November last year. And I was like, holy shit, I have an entry to Western States. And I just remember thinking, okay, I've got two events that get me as excited and as motivated as Kona has for the last eight years. And I was already, I could barely walk still from Havelina, and I was already like laying out a calendar of like, okay, these two events, like I can't wait to prep for these two. So it's been, yeah, six months of I remember specifically in my training journal, I, on December 1st, I started back after taking November last year all off. And I, it said 20 weeks to Unbound, 23 weeks to Western States. <laughs> this morning, uh, we are headed out on, well, hopefully three-ish hour ride. <laughs> Ian sent me a map. And I opened it and it was a hundred miles. So <laughs> uh, it could be anywhere from 50-ish to 100-ish. <laughs> I'm hoping it's closer to the 50-ish. We're uh, two days out right now from Unbound on Saturday. So kind of final longer, longer-ish day in the saddle. Before, just do an easy spin tomorrow and then race day going to do the uh, 50 mile course so it's the first i think we'll see like the first 10 15 miles of the race on sun saturday so i think there's that new climb d hill i think it's called and then come back and see the last 17 miles of the course on sunday so similar to what we did last year except for hopefully less muddy yeah Bye, catch us. into these two new sports I've been studying. Okay, th this is what the pro cyclists do. I've I worked with, a lot with Ian, especially er early season with some of the key workouts he does, some of the key training days. Um, he actually came out to Tucson and trained for a week, took me on some of his, his rides, which was amazing. felt this excited or motivated in probably, it was pre-COVID, to be honest. The last two to three years, I've been struggling on the triathlon side because I just haven't had the same excitement that I now found plotting these two events into my calendar as something that I, I care about and I want to do well at and I want to see how I can compete against the best women in the world at both of them. The, the last six months have been incredible. Honestly, just 
the day in and day out, the training, every morning I get up and I'm excited to train and try to get better, get stronger. So that you arrive to race day in a good spot mentally, like excited to be here and excited to to leave it out there on race day because you know the journey you've just enjoyed coming to it. So I feel very, I'm just, yeah, very grateful to be in this spot right now. in and out we well, want to make sure that you're off the bike for as little as possible and then basically not even get off the bike yeah um, so her setup will be um new camelbacks at yep. each and then you'll probably will you use that at all or or is it means that i think the best thing so the best thing to do so there's two options is like okay swap packs and then put two fresh bottles on or you do a musette hand up with everything what i would do is the pack and two bottles and that way you also have like excess fuel there if you're like holy crap i want a coke i want a stickers yeah. whatever you have that extra stuff there in the bag in, mm -hmm. in the bag right. and then whatever you don't use at aid one we'll bring to aid two so you have it okay. all right cool thank you guys yeah yeah easy Coming into both triathlon and now this in a not, I guess, a traditional way. I mean, I got into triathlon after ice hockey, so I didn't have swimming, biking, or running ever. And then now coming into this, I mean, I obviously have been biking with triathlon, but I haven't had the years of racing in a pack experience that these women have. And so it, it has been a learning experience, but I also do like that kind of I don't have the eyes on me that, say, some of these other women do. The past winners, Sophia, Lauren, some of these top, top riders, they're the ones to that should be watched. And so for me to come into this new space, I kind of like coming in that way and like, can I, can I race with them? Like, can I get up there with them? Can I surprise some people? And it gives you that mindset of like, this is only an opportunity ahead. There's only potential ahead to see what you can do. and. If it doesn't happen, fine, but if it does, like that is, yeah, that's amazing. That's like, I competed with the best in the world. Like for me, it's this mindset of opportunity ahead that makes things exciting. <laughs> I think I probably am happy about that. <laughs> Thrive in the mud. Yeah. <laughs> the more running, the better.
early, so everyone's nervous. Everyone's kind of trying to feel each other out and, and find their position. And everyone was kind of trying to stay near the front, um, coming into that section and kind of reading literally what was going to happen because, yeah, everyone knew it was coming. And then, yeah, sure enough, we hit mile 11 of a 205 mile day, and it was just a mud pit for, I don't know, five miles maybe. It was, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> it, everyone kind of just stopped and hopped off immediately. And then it just became a matter of attrition, like who can get through this mud? And it wasn't just, okay, well, we can like push our bike and run with it because the mud was so caked on that your wheels won't turn. You couldn't push, you had to carry your bike. And then your bike is also now 50 pounds heavier with the mud. So it was, it was tough. So it was just the, yeah, it was literally probably four or five miles of trying to get the mud out of the wheels so that you could actually maybe push it, get your bike up in the grass on the side of the road, um, running hopping back on thinking for a minute you're going to be able to ride again and then right back off again and I actually made it through the mud pretty far up in the in the women's field which I was super excited about I um I saw a friend I knew on the side of the road and he yelled to me that I, I think he yelled I was in sixth maybe sixth or seventh uh, I started riding I made it I think two or three miles going pretty good. I mean, the bike was still caked in mud. I was using my water bottles to try to like squirt out all the mud. I had a paint stick to dig the mud out. Um, and all of a sudden I just heard my rear cassette like start clicking down into the smallest chain ring on the back. So my biggest gear, the most difficult one to push. Oh no, 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 no. So I started trying to shift and my bike just wouldn't shift. And I'm like, panicking in my head but trying to stay calm like it's okay you've dealt with this before you know how to fix this I was still able to ride but then uh, maybe a mile later we hit a hill and I couldn't get up the hill because I was in such a big gear so I had to hop off started banging the rear my rear derailleur um, reset I did everything I could yeah that was early that would have been mile 15-ish maybe and then it just became yeah now what maybe just try and, uh, just try to get to 80 I was riding like that for about probably three or four miles just trying to work through in my head like what what should I do with what I'm given right now? And I got to a point where I saw Wadi and my crew and people on the side of the road. And it was kind of this like game time decision point because it was like, here is my opportunity to, to call the day. Um, I would have a ride back to town. I'm not stranded in the, Flint Hills alone somewhere in the middle of nowhere. In my head, it was just one of those things like, I've trained for six months for this event. I targeted this event. I, I, this was what I was spent my whole first half of the year getting ready for. And I'm healthy, I'm alive. I'm, I'm, I have no excuse not to try to keep going. I think it definitely crossed my mind that Western States was three weeks later and you know, is this smart? Is it, am I gonna get anything out of trying to continue with such a long day training wise? Or does it make more sense for me to just pull the plug and go grab my running shoes and go for a long run? Cause I have another event and so close, but I just didn't think that would, I guess, give my focus on Unbound justice. And I had no, I knew I just had to keep trying. And even though I had one gear and a skipping chain, it was like, no. It's too early. Maybe it'll come around. Maybe you, you'll be able to get out of this and it'll start working again. You never know. So I made that decision to keep going and said bye to friends and family that were giving me that out and literally take off pedaling. And I had a stream crossing like 
10 feet later and... Motherfucker! I take a pedal stroke out and I literally, it, the chain jumped so hard off that I thought I had ripped the whole derailleur off. I had made the decision to go on and then I literally thought my day was done out of my control because I freaked out because it was literally just so quick after that I had made that decisive like decision to go. And fortunately I got off and it was just, it had just, I think the chain had dropped or something, but the rear derailleur was still attached. So anyways, that was the one freak out. Maybe not the one freak out, but composed myself carried on so yeah I think mile 22 to 80 was just I mean I was riding I was riding big gear big gear strength work just doing what I could just to make my way to pit crew one we're like at like mile 44 or something like that just waiting for Heather I'm gonna her derailleur's busted up um I don't know what happened to it it's just not working so talked to big tall Wayne the mechanic and basically I'm going to show her how to basically manually jam the bike into various gears so we can get her to the to the first cruise station new derailleur on there so she can at least finish this thing up um, as a training day for western states is really going to be the goal now I mean we'll see what she says I think she's yeah when she gets here <laughs> yeah You got it to stay in one gear. Yeah. yeah. 14 yeah, yeah. single speed. Same single speed. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. At least you're in company. Nice. Okay. It's one of those moments where you have to decide, okay, what do you want to get out of this day? And what is your purpose for continuing on when it would have could have just been as easy of a choice to call it a day and everyone would have understood and it's one of those things I just have this mantra I always go to in my head of do it for those who can't and I've had that one for a couple years now just having had various friends who whatever life hits them with and it can be devastating so many different things that prevent someone from being able to do what we get to do when we tow the line at a, st at a start line and at the end of the day, this is athletics, it's sport. We get to do this. And those are kind of the two I always go to. We get to do this, like you get to be out here and others would give anything to be here that can't. Heather! Here. 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 They're gonna pick you here. What can I start doing? Same drink it. It's cold. Derailleur. Yeah. Yeah. I've just been single. You need any food? No. It's it's fun. Like that last final stretch, I don't know if you were spun out. Yeah. But I just had enough yeah, I had nothing. Here. Red Bull. Dang. Thank you so much. You got one of these? Um, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. I you just downed to... like a coconut. Okay. Do you want yeah. me to go get no. your stuff? I can get no. This, I just need water. Well, yep. once you <laughs> I think we should just make ourselves. I love you so much. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Around goes around. Good luck out there. Yes. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Yes, here we have one. Take it. Got her, Waddy? Yep. Thanks. Sure. Yep, I got her. Thanks. Important lube. <laughs> you need lube? Yeah, I give me some lube. This is. Here, watch out. I make it to mile 80. I, my 
sponsors, such a huge thank you to them for helping me get that bike fixed. I have gears again, and it's like, okay, I have an opportunity ahead of me, 125 miles ahead of me to do what I want with that and leave everything out there that I have right now on this day with everything I've been dealt. So it was more just, okay, back into race mode, even though I wasn't necessarily racing at the front. It's back into competitive mode, even though, yeah, I just broke the race down again. I knew I had another pit stop 85 miles later, and then after that, there would be 40 miles left. I went back into focusing on nutrition, effort level, staying hydrated, um, and then just enduring everything we had out there yesterday because that became another factor. We started with mud and then literally halfway through the day, the skies opened up. It started hailing, lightning and thunderstorms. Um, I was getting hail from the side, like into my ear. I was like riding for a bit like this, trying to just not get bruised on my face. <laughs> it was, it was a, Hectic, hectic, hectic day out there for sure. So it just made the whole day this big experience um, of, yeah, I survived all of that and, and pushed through and it threw at us everything you could imagine. <laughs> Off the hook. You're killing it though. You're one back up there. Yeah, I mean. Bottles. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Brian. You okay? You need my jacket or Nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah? yeah? Thank yeah. you guys. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. What is sundown officially? Do we know? 835. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm, trying for, I'm trying for the sundown. Hours ahead of sundown. <laughs> I was definitely thinking about Western states out there. I think the most prevalent it came into my mind was everything you're going through right now, this is a training day. You're not running, but these are all mental things you're gonna uh, face three weeks from now. The finish line was definitely bittersweet. Um, it was one of those, yeah. I was definitely happy I finished. I know I would have been pissed at myself if I had pulled the plug. Um, and I'm just, yeah, anyone who finished yesterday, I think, is a win for everyone because to get through what we faced yesterday, I mean, takes a lot of perseverance, a lot of like, yeah, you have so many challenges to overcome. And so to get to that finish line is, yeah, it's an achievement. And it was like, hey, I made it. I made it to the finish. Thank goodness. I was also pretty pretty frustrated, pretty disappointed. I didn't come here for that, but while I didn't finish yesterday where I would have wanted results-wise, it was a victory just to make it to that finish line. Oh, I'm so dirty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 15 hours after finishing <laughs> Unbound, what are we gonna do? <laughs> Just headed out for a little shakeout run today. <laughs> All right. Yeah. See you in three yeah. weeks. Western States, baby. <laughs> All right.